destiny is not decided for you by an anonymous force. If you want to pull the thread, and change everything, then pull it. This is like a bit of a random one to start with, but there's something really like anime about May as a character and like oh, the performance sweet. and like the physicality of it. Oh my um, god, that, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> so I just want to know, like, in terms of your just like general inspiration for like the performance and the role that you've kind of that you brought to it. Like, where was your head at and the kind of character you wanted to create on screen? Oh man, that's such a cool piece of feedback to receive because I think we definitely thought about all kinds of references and anime references too when we thought about character design. Um, I One of my favorite manga artists is Junji Ito, so I feel like he inspires me often, even when I don't intend for it to happen. But uh, we also referenced Kill Bill often as, as one of our touchstones. Uh, Leslie actually showed Kill Bill to the whole crew when cool. we started filming. And I think Kill Bill has some hardcore anime references yeah. as well, so it's probably like a trickle-down effect. Uh, I thought about different assassin archetypes and... One of my favorite ones was Gogo -Go from that film. Um, I loved how there's like a femininity and girlishness to her while also being, well, a murderer. <laughs> 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 and um, I just thought that would be like the most fun way to play the role and it would just be a character I was much more interested in seeing. And so we thought about all those elements together. Uh, me and Jennifer Bryan, our costume designer, and Leslie, of course, our creator, and Jeremy Woodhead, who's um, head of hair and makeup, and Kamanza Mahaya, who uh, designed the wigs. We kind of just decided to go with this, like, your anime arch like archetype, yeah. I think there's a lot of, like, um, this is just a, a detail now, but like, and you referenced, I think, um, Clone Wars in like a previous interview, and there's like a bit of a Sarge Ventress and a bit of like Ahsoka as well, and the kind of physicality of the character, which is just is really cool oh, to see. Oh, thank you. Um, Sweet. I was lucky enough to attend the premiere last night, and on stage you referenced that line that we see in the trailer where that Leslie mm -hmm. wrote, which is like, you know, it's not about dark or light, it's about um, power and who kind of is able to wield it. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could just like speak a little bit more to like why that line stood out to you and how you kind of think it may be in a spoiler free way sort of like permeates the tone of the show? Sure. Um, well, there are several lines in the show that, especially now that I get to watch it again and on, on the big screen, hit me in a different way than they did on the page. Mm -hmm. And that's one of them. Another line that I love that Leslie wrote um, is that if we don't meditate upon the past, we are uh, forced to repeat it. And I think that's very much in alignment with with th with that line that you reference as well. Um, it just feels, I think that there are some themes in Star Wars that have been there since its inception, that have been the core of its morality. George Lucas talks about Star Wars being a response to the Vietnam War. It's an interpretation of violence, of dictatorship, um, of abuse of power, and how people are corrupted by institutions and fear. Uh, and we want to continue doing that in our show, uh, while also providing something that hopefully feels contemporary. And uh, we see these characters go through a lot of moral dilemma and question the institutions that they exist in. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you said, it's joined a long legacy of Star Wars media that does that. Mm -hmm. um, something else that I loved about the show is just like the scale of the cast. I love that it's like this big ensemble group and you kind of, we meet a ton of characters and different kind of people. And I guess as a performer, well, like how is that kind of acting uh, opposite the kind of this, this big range of people? And did you learn anything you kind of particularly felt like you learned from other performers that you got to work with? It was so much fun. Um, being a part of un an ensemble is so special. And also everyone in this cast authentically loves each other. <laughs> um, and we have like a cast of wild characters. <laughs> like, everyone is vastly different from each other. Everyone's a little unhinged in the right way. <laughs> um, I mean, I learned so much from everyone, from Daphne, who, you know, Daphne was also a child actor. I learned things from her all the time about how she's navigated her life and how it's um, led her to this moment. Um, I learned so much from uh, Lee Jung-jae, 
just obser- by observing mm-hmm. him, I mean, he has like that international superstar level of talent and quality of his performance. And so being his scene partner just felt like an opportunity to, to watch him yeah. and keep my ears and my eyes open. Um, Carrie Ann Moss taught me a lot about uh, stunt movement and how ultimately you can drill you know, the, the um, technical abilities over and over and over again, but it's really just about imbuing mm-hmm. that character with the spirit you think that they have. Um, I, everyone was so special. Were all these little details in the production and the script that make it feel like a real physical Yes. Place, real people that I'm watching. Um, there's dirt on the costumes. There are real puppets. Stuff that, to me as a viewer, really kind of speaks out. I just wanted Good. to know how important it was to kind of capture for you, Leslie, that a show that feels grounded and having that kind of. Oh, it, it was. It. it was um, it, right from the beginning. I was like, I don't want to shoot on the volume. Uh, I love. I mean, listen, those shows are gorgeous. Um, uh, but um, uh, I just thought my Star Wars because I'm getting the opportunity to do this as a super fan, um, I just wanted to borrow all that stuff from uh, the original trilogy only because that was my introduction to Star Wars. And I remember as a little kid being like, how is this, not this articulate, but like, how is this Star Wars, how is this fantasy sci-fi world taking place in this kind of, it looks like real beat up. Yeah, like it yeah. looks, it it's looks, lived in. It's run yeah, down. it's very, you know, so that, that, you know, dichotomy, even yes. though as a kid I couldn't articulate yeah. that, it was just wild. Yeah. Like a long time ago, mm-hmm. you know, like that it was somehow, yeah. Yeah, it's a part of the charm. I guess for you, Manny, in terms of like performing then in, on these, in these real locations, on these real sets, mm-hmm. that I guess that kind of help inform the performance because you kind of were in a real place. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, it was a huge luxury, uh, especially for my first scene. Um, Because, you know, uh, when you come into a project like this and you want that first scene to be great and it really helped and informed uh, my character's environment and it helped to ground me as an actor. And again, I didn't have to use any of my imagination. I just I could just live in it because of the, the sounds and the smells and just everything around me was just all the work was done for me. Was constructing a world that feels grounded kind of key to helping you tackle those bigger ideas. Yes, absolutely. I think you have to start small. I mean, this was something that Kathleen said to me very early on. She said, this, whatever, you know, uh, wherever you go with this, she really responded, obviously, to 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 the story pitch. But she said, you know, wherever you go with this as you're writing, just remember that this story needs to be personal, it needs to be intimate, Mm -hmm. and it should be something that you could take out of the Star Wars world and put into... Uh, a modern day setting and it would still work. Mm -hmm. Um, So that is how I kept it in that in that grounded place that yeah. you're talking about. Very similar to the work, from my point of view, that like Tony Gore has done on Andor, again, yes. feels like a story <laughs> that you could lift and, and shift out of the setting and feels real. Um, slightly differently, Vanny, your character, I think, kind of fits in this legacy of sort of like scoundrel adjacent <laughs> characters of the world yes. of Star Wars. Um, did you have any, like, not just within the franchise, but like particular inspirations for how you kind of brought that performance to life? Ah, uh, good question. Um, I uh, pulled from many great scoundrels. Uh, I think one in particular was uh, Mr. Jack Sparrow, Johnny Depp's work on the Pirates of the Caribbean, I think was a good kind of reference. And just also just like physical movement with a lot of what kind of Buster Keaton or Charlie Chaplin do, you know, with kind of like just how they use their body and um, yeah, just a lot of that kind of bounciness per se uh, helped inform Chimera a lot. Yeah, and I think you can see that like in the the scene that we get introduced to him in the mm-hmm. show, that there is like, you kind of popped because it's quite a physically different thing to what you're used to seeing in Star Wars. Yeah, very much so. It's, it's such a huge juxtaposition with like the Jedi who are so stoic and mm. still and you have Kaimi who's just running circles around <laughs> and trying to make sense of everything, yeah. Um, and I guess finally, the another thing I loved about the show um, is that you kind of bring together this huge ensemble cast and the talent on show is like, I don't know, 
age and identity, there's such a range, I think, that really like brings the story to life. How is it working for both of you with such this kind of this this big group of very talented? I mean, I know I say this all the time, but it is actually true, which is that I got my first choice for everyone. Um, Amandala was somebody very early on that became, uh, you know, that rose to the top of the of the May Osha Mm. um, dynamic just a, 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 an actor that has been working for so long, um, so iconic in Hunger Games, um, and, and can run the gamut of so many things. Um, Li Shang uh, I was writing Soul when I when I watched Squid Game. I couldn't believe that performance. I just thought that would be he would be such an incredible Soul, and I I assumed that he didn't want to perform in English, and then he did. Um, the second season, everyone's going to speak Korean, yeah, uh, just to make it <laughs> yeah, just to make try. it up to him. Yes, Man, yes. Manny was my first choice. I I sent his um, reel to Kathleen, and I said, "This is." my first choice and also my only choice. So if you don't approve this, I don't have any other ideas and we're going to have to cut the character. Um, Daphne was my first choice. Giving X-23 uh, a lightsaber was mm-hmm. just a, a personal dream. And then, um, of course, casting my wife as a fan favorite seemed like mm-hmm. an obvious thing to do. And then, of course, Carrie Ann. It had to be Carrie Ann. Um, again, I don't know how that scene would would work and how that cold open would land mm. for the viewer if it wasn't trinity like yeah. it you had to buy that this was the most powerful jedi around mm. um so uh i don't know if that answers your question but and also you know watching it uh on the big screen in, in at the premiere and then uh it, it just it, it the the performances really boggle my mind. I, like I knew everyone was good, <laughs> obviously. I I I uh, well because I directed. Them. <laughs> no no <laughs> no. That, I mean you know I I knew everyone was astonishing because I I worked on uh, post production for like nine months a year. Mm-hmm. Um, s- but seeing it on a big screen, like yeah. that's where I was like, all the stuff they're doing is even more nuanced mm. than I than I thought they were doing. Um, I was wondering if you could start by telling me a little bit about the first time you felt like you connected with Soul as a character, was whether that was putting Jedi robes on for the first time or holding a lightsaber, kind of what that moment was like and for you. Jedi를 연기한다라는 것이 믿겨지지가 않았고 그리고 또 어, 실제로 어, 되게 빨리 이 제다이 마스터 소울이 되어야 된다라는 생각도 많이 하게 됐는데 실제로 그게 이제 현실감이 이제 있지 않다 보니까 그게 시간이 좀 오래 걸렸어요. 그래서 그 최대한 그 시간을 단축하기 위해서 시나리오를 계속해서 읽고 또 읽고 읽고 또 읽고 계속 하다 보니까 이제 조금씩 조금씩 이제 그 소울이라는 인물로 이제 빠져들게 되면서 아 이제 진짜 내가 제다이를 연기를 하, 하, 하겠구나라는 생각을 가졌죠. 그런데 어, 막상 커스튬이랑 그 라이트세이버를 딱 잡는 순간에 또 <웃음> 다시 어 이거 진짜 현실 맞나? 내가 지금 제다이 의상과 어, 소품을 들고 있는 게 이게 맞나? 현실이 느껴지지가 않아서 그때 이제 다시 또 어, 빨리 소울로 다시 돌아가야 된다라는 생각을 또 하고 그런 그 반복적인 상황이 계속 있었어요. 그러면서 세트장에 딱 들어가니까 첫 촬영 때 이제 너무 긴장을 해가지고 잘해야 된다라는 생각밖에 없었는데 세트장에 처음에 딱 들어갔을 때도 사실 어, 이 소울로 완벽하게 이제 빠져들지 못했는데 그날 이제 촬영을 하고 나서 이제 그 다음서부터는 조금 긴장이 풀리면서 아 이제 내가 진짜 소울이 되었구나 라는 생각이 들었죠. 그러니까 시간은 굉장히 오래 걸렸어요. Um, when I first uh, knew that I would become a uh, Master Soul, I really couldn't believe it. And of course, I wanted to transform into Master Soul quickly, uh, but it actually took some time. Um, so I read and reread the script 
um, in order to fall more into the character. And even uh, when I put on my uh, costume and held my lightsaber for the first time, I couldn't get the thought out of my head that was like, is this reality? So when I walked onto set for the first time, um, I was incredibly nervous and felt like I still wasn't Master Soul yet. But as we progressed uh, with shooting, I kind of let go of a lot of my anxiety. And I think that's finally when I was able to become Master Soul. Mm, interesting. And I guess there's added pressure because you're joining Star Wars. It's you know the biggest franchise in the world. And I know you were, you were a fan when you were younger. So was that kind of also in the back of your mind? You're kind of joining this big kind of legacy of, of characters and Jedi characters that kind of you're adding your entry into that that list. 이게 사실 다른 영화하고는 다르게 정말 70년도서부터 지금까지 계속해서 많은 이야기를 만들어냈고 수많은 캐릭터들이 그 안에 담겨 있잖아요. 그런데 이제 에콜라이트도 역시 그 많은 에피소드들 중에 하나인 것이고 그리고 또 제가 거기에 이제 제다의 역할로 참여하게 된 것은 이게 지금 70년도서부터 지금까지 이어진 그런 역사적인 아, 프랜차이즈인데 앞으로 계속 또 발전해 나갈 거 아니에요. 그렇다면은 저도 역시 마찬가지로 그 유니버스 안에 담겨 있을 캐릭터이기 때문에 너무나도 중요한 순간이고 잘 해야만 한다라고 생각했고 그 다음에 무엇보다도 스타워즈를 사랑하고 응원하는 그 많은 팬분들에게 좋은 모습을 보여드리고 싶은 마음이 가장 컸어요. Like you mentioned, Star Wars is a franchise that you know began in the 70s and continues even now, and it has an incredibly expansive universe with so many different storylines and different characters. And of course, it'll continue into the future as well. Uh, so becoming part of that universe, of course, was a burden and also kind of gave me um, some worries because there's so many Star Wars fans, but also um, at the same time, it was a great honor. What sort of character Characters, do you think, kind of, are an inspiration for Master Soul? So Jedi, or just you know, in fiction generally, what kind of man is he? What kind of character is he? What would you kind of, how would you set him up for fans before they watch the show? Master Soul은 어, 기본적으로 제가 촬영을 다 마치고 난 다음에 어, 또 생각이 또든 것은. 희생 정신이 굉장히 어, 이 사람에게는 어, 있는 사람이구나. 그것이 이제 화합과 어, 평화를 위해서 그런 희생 정신이 굉장히 강한 그런 사람이구나라는 것을 느끼게 됐어요. 근데 우리 주변 어, 실제 우리 생활에서는 그런 희생 정신이 강한 어, 사람들을 만나기가 그렇게 쉽지는 않죠. 하지만 어, 뉴스에서는 우리가 어, 가끔 접할 수 있죠. 어, 어떤 큰 일에 자신의 어, 희생을 어, 어, 자신의 희생을 무릅쓰고 어, 다른 사람의 생명을 구하는 어떤 그런 훌륭한 인물들이 있죠. 어, 그런데 마스터 소울에게도 그런 어, 희생 정신이 있는 강한 사람이구나라는 것을 느끼게 됐고요. 어, 그리고 어, 가장 어, 영감을 받았던 것은 어, 전체 그 스타워즈 시리즈에 나온 제다이들을 다시 보게 됐고 제다이들을 연기한 모든 배우분들을 다시 연기를 잘 관찰을 하게 됐는데 그 중에서도 저는 콰이곤 진의 어, 캐릭터 그리고 어, 그 캐릭터를 연기하신 리암 리슨의 연기를 굉장히 잘 어, 뭐라고 할까요? 뭐 받아들였다라고 해야 될까요? 뭐 그랬던 것 같습니다. Um, when I finished uh, shooting the acolyte, I actually got a chance to reflect again at my character, Master Soul, and I think he is someone who sacrifices a lot in order to maintain harmony and peace within his community. And I think um, this type of person um, is very rare uh, to meet in real life. Mm -hmm. Of course, you hear about these people in the news, but I think this is kind of what makes Master Soul uh, so unique. In terms of preparing for the role, um, 
um, I went and watched a lot of uh, Star Wars films and shows of the past and studied um, the great actors who had um, given great performances as Jedi Masters. And of all the performances, um, I especially got inspiration um, from Liam Neeson's uh, acting of Qui-Gon Jinn in the past. I can see that, right? Because Qui-Gon and Sol, um, without spoilers, that there's, there's, they are Jedi, but have conflicts within them. They're, they're not, they're not kind of perfect people. They're still working through those things. We see it in the trailer. We see in the conversations they have. That that balance is in play all the time. Was that kind of, I guess, was that core to the performance that you were trying to kind of deliver? Oh, 물론이죠. 아마도 그래서 그 제다이 기사단의 그 정신이 계속 쭉 이어져 왔다라는 것이 저한테는 가장 중요한 어, 설정이었던 것 같아요. 그렇다 보니까 어떻게 보면은 상상을 한다면은 어, 콰이곤 진이 어, 소울의 파다한 느낌이지 않았을까라는 생각을 하면서 어, 콰이곤 진이 가지고 있는 철학이 어, 소울하고도 연관이 되는 그런 것이 가장 중요하겠다. 그렇다면, 그런데 그렇다면 그것이 연관이 돼서 이어졌다면은 그것이 바로 제다이 기사단의 철학이지 않을까라는 생각을 하게 됐죠. I think uh, it was very important for me to represent that the Jedi philosophy um, maintains through all these different ages. So I almost even imagine Qui-Gon being a Master Soul's Padawan and forming that connection between the two of them and also maintaining that Jedi philosophy through generations was very important for me. I wanted to start, Rebecca, with you. Yes. I want you to talk me through the process of finding out that your wonderful wife is joining the world of Star Wars. Yes. She's making a brilliant show. She wants you to be in it. Oh, great. But you're green. Yeah. Was that, uh, how that's did that a, that's go, a good go down? Thing. Yeah. The green part? Yeah. I loved Vanessa. I was reading, the, I was going to play a different part. Um, and uh, then I was reading the uh, scripts yeah. and I read Vernestra's first line and I was like, who? Who's this? Yeah. Who's Vanessa? Just kidding, <laughs> Vanestra. And um, Vanessa. and I started reading about her and um, found out what she looked like. And then we did the character design, and I was obsessed, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, really, she's a, she's really a character that I think people are gonna adore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and I'm learning about the fans way. who love what? her has been so it's so cool. I hope yeah. they love her arc over the, sure the first will. season. Yeah. Um, you both also obviously worked with Leslie on um, Russian Doll in, in different ways. Yeah, yeah what we is did. It? Or, both <laughs> of you, both of you were saying all three. She wasn't born yet, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I just wanted to know like, what it is that she you think born. she kind of brings creatively to the world of Star Wars. She has quite a unique viewpoint. Is that something that you feel comes across in the I mean, pers- I, <laughs> go, yeah, go for <laughs> it. My wife should probably be answering this one. <laughs> but from my personal experience, uh, Rebe- uh, I mean, Re- Rebecca. Rebecca made Star Wars. Well, honestly, Rebecca, you have a lot of hand, and I'm sure just being partners, you, okay. you do a lot. Okay, I'll but Leslie, <laughs> Leslie, beyond being a brilliant writer, uh, a script uh, organizer, <laughs> uh, a right. creator, um, she is a fan, and she, yeah. it was, it was so uh, empowering and also. Uh, validating to know that you had someone in your corner leading you who knew this world inside and out. You could trust, I trust Mm -hmm. Leslie already as a creative. I trusted her from working on such a difficult project like Russian Doll and making Mm -hmm. it brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, But this world, which is, you know, the weight of so many stories of generations of people finding, I mean, it's a religion to a lot of people, you know? The connections are deep. You need someone like that who you can go to the ends of the earth with and not have any questions. And yeah. I, I had full, full, full trust mm. and knew it was the right decision because I saw it and it's pretty dang good. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne, you obviously have worked in these kind of like big genre spaces for a long time now, whether that's fantasy or superheroes and obviously like Star Wars and the big world of science fiction. Do you think there is a kind of knack to operating in these kind of like higher they operate on such a kind of big, almost operatic scale, right, in the worlds that you're living in. Does there, is there like a trick to kind of bringing a grounded performance oh, to a, 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 a franchise like this or yeah. a show like this? Yeah, I think, I don't think I even do this consciously, but I just don't see it any differently to when I do an indie. Mm-hmm. And I've always, acting to me has always been about like thinking and feeling and reflecting on how I would be in that situation and mm-hmm. and kind of, bringing as much truth as possible to what is on the page. 
And I think with a script like this, it was really easy just because Leslie gets actors mm. and her dialogue is so just impeccable. And I think also being married to an actor must also really do that to you, to <laughs> so, like understand yeah. an actor's mind. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think when you're operating on such huge sets with these huge budgets, it also really helps to have practical sets and that really mm -hmm. grounds your performance in a way. But truly for me, it's, it's always about kind of forgetting how huge it is and remembering that you are just, at the end of the day, you're playing a character and this character feels this way. And to them, they're not on this huge production doing this, they're living it. So it's it's kind of about finding the truth in that. Yeah. And great crews too. Crew that yes, yeah. fantastic crews. Yeah. Um, Charlie, your character uh, certainly up front, I think has like a lot of the delivers a lot of the com like comedic beats of the show. Yes. <laughs> and, they, and, it, and it's very funny. What? Um, how is that? Happen? When it was funny? <laughs> I don't find it funny at all. I was going uh, for somber. <laughs> Similar to like, like what Daphne just said, it, how is, like, is it tricky delivering the comedy in a genre space that can be quite po-faced? No, because he's so committed to what he is doing. And, it, it, you know, it's the it's the route that we're all taught as actors. <laughs> you laugh about just, just thinking you played it so straight. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was I mean, so serious committed. to you. Yeah. At what? And you <laughs> yes, know me. Is. You're yeah. hearing me behind. It's, you know, it's one of the first lessons we have as actors. You can't judge your characters. You have to go into it committed and understanding who they are. It, it, it's the utmost of what you can. And, yeah. um, no, every action, you know, down to steaming and taking my shirt off in a ship was, I'm not taking my shirt off. I'm steaming my yeah. jacket in order to be the best Jedi that I can possibly be. <laughs> this is all yeah. part of the ultimate of creating a safe and peaceful mm. galaxy. Yeah. Um, and he believes, don't laugh at me, <laughs> he believes wholeheartedly in the mission that he is on. Yeah. Yes. I mean, every egg is in the basket, mm. you know. Um, I guess <laughs> more like generally with the, I think the tone of the show is what's gonna, for me is what drew me in and I think it's gonna, what, is what is gonna draw a lot of people in. It, that idea that the show is kind of not interested in purely kind of the light or the dark and it's about the kind of morally gray space in between, is that something that, kind of shone through to you in the script and the kind of appeal to you generally. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, if you want to yeah. start. Yes, I mean, I think they were, they're kind of um, caught off guard. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, Vernestra is attempting to contain the situation, but you know, I think she has a pretty bad feeling about this very early on. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to quote. Nobody Charlie didn't. and everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I can't take that claim. It's, <laughs> it's a quote I've passed down to. Um, uh, again, Leslie, I, I, I have to say it is, I mean, she's brilliant at creating characters. You can see the past, present, and the future. And those dynamics, it's just not as simple as being you are this or you are that. We mm -hmm. all know it as humanity. It's, yeah. I, it's one of the best parts of her, and it, I think it's one of the best parts about Star Wars, is mm -hmm. those dynamics are always. Yeah. yeah. And, her, and her approach to it was kind of so interesting. And, and even in Jodie's line, of it's about power. That's what the show is about. It's about mm. power, and, and it's who about who gets it. to wield it, and it's, mm -hmm. and that's what really fascinated me. I remember hopping on my first call with Leslie, and she was, kind of, inviting me to yeah. join, um, and, it the her point of view on it was so fascinating to me and so, kind of refreshing and, and her her views on on the Jedi and, and just everything in this world was so interesting and. Yeah, just fresh and new and fascinating and from a, and a very human, like, reflective point of view. And also, how fun is it that we get to have, like, a little crime thriller, basically, yeah. mm -hmm. on yeah. our hands? Yeah. Mm -hmm.